Hey guys, Rick Hogg with Warhog Tactical and I wanna go over the Warhog Self Eval. So again, the way we set this up is it'll work if you're in a kind of restricted range type area where now I've just have the single target backer, but now I have my two targets. I've got my smaller index card down here and then I've got kind of a larger one up here. Now I kind of do this by design because typically most shooters are gonna shoot this thing from left to right because we're right-handed, that's kind of the easier way to go. Once we shoot it, I'll kind of talk about my thought process behind it and kind of give you some food for thought. The other thing I've told you guys before when it comes to this, you can modify it however you want. If you wanna run bullseye targets, if you wanna run steel, if you wanna run some type of other paper because your range allows it, by all means. This is just a tool that you can shoot and kind of get, I just call it the self eval because that's what it is. How do I have some tangibles in here that will improve myself so I can make some notes and go, hey, where's some areas I need to work on? How is my marksmanship? And gives me something to take away from. The other thing is this is typically a 20 round course of fire. With kind of the ammo constrictions going on the way it is, we've trimmed this down to a 12 round course of fire. So it'll be two mags of six. Typically it's two mags of 10. So again, could you tweak it down even further to two mags of four if you wanted to? You could. You lose a little bit in there, but again, I understand you've got to kind of make things work with what you have for training available. So we're going to go ahead and put this thing down at five yards. The other thing too is typically you can start from either the holster or the ready position. I usually start at the ready just because that's where I have my students at, and this is something I'm trying to replicate for them so they can... Uh, duplicate this when they actually go home and, and are training on their own. So let me go ahead and put this target down. I'll load up, shoot the drill, and then we'll come back. We'll talk about it a little bit. So again, like I said, I've got two mags of six. So I'll go ahead and conduct my Warhog administrative load to make sure we're good there. So I draw my pistol out, drive it out. Yep, my dot's good. I lock my slide of the rear, secure my first mag. It's going in, slide forward. Once it's good, I sit there and um, do my Warhog check and make sure I'm good. So again, it's critical that you sit there and run some type of timer because we want to use the timer because this gives us our tangibles. And then when we obviously shoot it, that'll give us some type of score there. So we'll go ahead at the ready position. So again, I ended up getting my time on that one there, and we'll talk about this time here in a sec, but I wanna sit there, pull the target, and just kinda of talk to you guys about that a little bit. So again, if you look at it, couple things. Number one, if you go back to what I did at the end, I sat there, you know, kinda of dropped the mag. Um, I did a kinda of ghost reload there, cause I don't wanna get in the mindset of, hey, the fight's over, I wanna sit there, load it up, and make sure I get that ghost reload in there whenever I conduct my drills, cause I don't wanna get caught kinda of in that flat range mentality. The second thing to look at is, you know, you're gonna sit there, tally up your scores. What you'll see is I ended up engaging this one here first. And the reason I set this up like this is because like I said, most people will shoot it from left to right. But if you're looking at it from a self-defense aspect, this is my larger target, which probably means that is my threat or the closer threat to me. So I, I wanna engage this one first. Same thing, one, two, conduct the mag change, come back to one and then hit two. Here's the thing. I ask a lot of guys, hey, if my round were to hit right there on the edge, so if I were just kind of break the paper, would you count it or not? And this is a question you're going to have to ask yourself. So I will just tell you this. For me, I don't. So if I sit there and it's right there breaking the edge and it's not a good, clean, solid hit, then I'm not going to count it. I want to hold myself to a higher level. And then what I can do is I can take my pro timer and I can sit there and I can kind of just work my different times. I can look at these times as my tangibles where I can sit there and go, hey, here's my split time as far as on the bigger target. Sitting there, hey, what was my magazine change time? What was my index going from one to the other? So I've got all this data here that really what I want to do is take it, write it down, put it in my training logbook, And if I've videoed this as well, now I've got tangible data that I can take back and go, hey, where do I need to improve? How can I fix it? And I break it down incrementally. Hey, what was my draw to first shot? Or what was my presentation of first shot? How well were my splits on this larger target, on this smaller target? How quick was I going here to here? And how quick was my magazine change? I could add a TAC magazine change in there if I wanted. 
So there's a variety of things that I can do with this one drill, but really you're determining what it is, but take that time and break it down. Just don't go, oh, my time was X. We get so wrapped around the overall time, but we never look at, hey, how can I make those minute adjustments to make things better? Use the timer for that. Use kind of this drill as, as a tangible that you can put in your training notebook. And like I said, whether you're doing a three round per target, whether you're doing a five round, heck, if you gotta go down to two, I get it, but at least we're doing something for training. Write the number around your firing, kind of what your score was, and this gives you tangibles to go, how well am I improving on my firearms training?